All right, everybody. We're here at James Lugo Music, centrally located in beautiful downtown East Nashville. <laughs> the <laughs> nasty. Yeah. And we are starting a new thing here. We're back. We're <laughs> Jordan hears me say that we're back. He's going to make fun of me because I'm always yeah. saying I'm back. But <laughs> we are back. <laughs> We're going to start shooting new types of videos, and today we're doing Battle of the Fenders, mm -hmm. and we're going to be doing a J. Mascus Jaguar, a my old Fender Strat with Fralins and uh, Telly with Lawlers, and this is just a Squire that's tuned to Nashville tuning, so I'll give you a little spectrum. But... Um, did you see the video yesterday uh, that you know, we focus? We oh, I got to get back on this. That uh, uh, accurate beats put out no, day before yesterday, I'm, I think. I haven't watched this video. Oh before. man, he's it's so awesome. Yeah. But the thing is, it's less talking. Yeah. So we're gonna get into some less talking, even though yeah. I'm, I'm I'm talking. Yeah. There's gonna be less talking, I promise. And once. Once I get through the next week or two, because I'm studying for a certification, and we're going to start shooting these videos again, and they're they're not going to be so much producty videos and like you know shootouty videos and like testing gear videos. Basically, we're gonna we're gonna do it a little. Uh, you know, we're, what I'm gonna do is start making music. <laughs> we're gonna start making music, yeah. and we're gonna just make videos of us making music, writing, writing and producing songs, tracking guitars. Um, I'm going to start doing some cue music for film and television, some instrumental stuff, some shredding, some beat making, yeah. some drum programming, some, you know, yeah. so anyway, so this is kind of, this, the rig is finally put together and, uh, you know, we've got Strymons and Eventides and it's, it's, it's crazy. Yeah. It's happening yeah. and it's going to be less talking and more music and it's going to be a lot of fun. All right, so here we are. Battle of the Fenders. Hey, it looks like everything's recording. This is a J a J Mascus. What is the J Mascus? What makes a J Mascus? J Mascus, J Mascus uh, is some dude from a band called Dinosaur Jr. He's a trip. You should watch his videos. When he talks, he's like, hey, I'm J Mascus. He's so like... Yeah, he's, he's a funny guy. But, uh, yeah, it's just his signature. So the way we've got this now is we can mute the audio. Hey. And I'm going to play this brand new J. Mascus Jazzmaster into a deluxe reverb and AC30. And I'll play with some effects. And here we go.
Yeah, now we're back talking. Check it out. This, I love this guitar. I love this guitar, man. I don't know what else to say. That's, I just think this is such a cool guitar. And, you know, I've been getting into all these ambient guys, so it's just, I don't know. I just think this is a cool guitar. And I, I turned down the, the tone. It, the guitar is kind of bright. Um, and it's just got a great, it's got such a great acoustic sound. Like I, sometimes I just go like. It sounds like, it almost sounds like Rush, like, like 2112. You know, that's just acoustic. You know, and then you, you turn it up and you get. What you, I didn't turn it off for that thing, but anyway, you get it. So there it is. There's uh, a J Mascus, and I'm just gonna do kind of cleans today. There it is. This is such a great guitar. All I did was just lower the action. One thing that does kind of stink about it are the machine heads. I'm gonna uh, I'm gonna get new machine heads for that because they're like they're like three dollar machine heads. Yeah, you know, that's where they, they they always that's where they save money for these cheapy guitars, and you know you put new machine heads and better pickups or whatever, and you know you invest a hundred two hundred bucks and you got a nice guitar. All right, so this is this is a um, late seventies. Uh, this is a, I think a sixty two reissue kind of Frankenstein. I, I've had this since I was a kid. I bought this in seventy nine, I think, or eighty. At modern music in Fort Lauderdale and yay modern music it's not there anymore though but I bought actually I didn't buy it there I, the lady who wanted to sell it they didn't want to buy it and I went out in the parking lot and bought it off of her but this one is seen it's traveled the world with me a million times over it's it was my whole Van Halen experience I at one point had another pick guard on here that I had cut out with a solder gun <laughs> and I had like a uh, a, a JB drilled into the body. I remember for years I had a JB built drilled into the body and a Telly lipstick drilled into the body. Nothing in the middle. And I had, at one point I had a Kaler, which is still cut out. Then I got a Floyd and I was going through the whole Van Halen, you know, the Kira Takasaki kind of thing. And then it just sat for like 10, 15, 10 years. I never used it. I was moved on to Les Pauls and we had a dude in the studio in, in Hollywood and he was a Strat guy, and we started recording him a lot, and I, I, was, I just thought it was so cool. I was like, wait a second, I have a Strat. And I pulled it out, and I was like, you know what? I took it to this music store, Santa Monica Music, I think, and they put in, these are Lawler Woodstocks, and they basically just, and I put a stop plate, the, the, the tailpiece is locked down, and, and we, I got a funky <laughs> metal flake pick guard but this guitar has bite marks and everything from this is this is what i learned on learning all those ingve solos and van halen and frustration and sliding it across dance floors and yeah so anyway so it's this is you know basically a frankenstein strat <laughs> This is the 80s sound. You ready for this? This is the 80s. It's like you could be a missing persons or, you know, like...
I just hit I just hit one of the even ties I don't, it was something I was messing with the other day anyway there it is it's a strat I don't play this thing that much you know this is like to me this is not nearly as much fun as that jazz master I don't know why it's just something about it. it's not fun to me anymore but this is useful that is a great you know classic sound I love the middle pickup on this guitar too this is the middle pick this um i think that next week uh, this is gonna be the other guitar we're gonna take to east side music supplies it needs a it's this neck is too straight i, I don't want to mess with it i've got it cut out here so that we can adjust it yeah it's just too flat anyway there it is what do you think so far mr will you gotta speak up because of the there, microphone yeah oh uh, they're definitely very different sounds between the Strat and the Jazzmaster, because the Jazzmaster is almost, it's, it's more full, kind of richer tone. Right, and I think that one kind of has almost like pseudo um, P90s. I think they're like yeah. kind of like they sit between a P90, I don't know, from what I've read. Yeah. Yeah, I don't think there is... Yeah, the Jazzmaster is kind of exactly... I, I love those kind of guitars that yeah. sit between things because they're just yeah. cool and yeah. All right, so uh, same same basic story with this is the Strat. Uh, we had a session guitar player that played at the studio in Hollywood, um, Eric or something, and he had a Nash Telly, and. He made a record at the studio, and I remember we were all like, man, that, that is the coolest guitar. He's like, well, I'm going on the road. I'll just leave it here. So he left it with us for like six months. And man, I grew uh, uh, I grew very close to that guitar. I really loved that guitar. And when he left, I was like, I was looking at Nash's, and they're like 1800 bucks, and I'm like, ugh, forget it. And the guy that was the session guy at the studio said, why don't you just get a road worn? and find out what pickups were in the Nash. So I found this road worn. I talked to Bill Nash personally, and it, he said, oh yeah, those guitars had Lawler Special Tees. So I put Lawler Special Tees in this, and uh, it looks like it's falling down. I don't know what's up with that. I gotta, this guitar, it, my guitars need a little work. But anyway, I put a, a vintage tailpiece on it, but a six saddle, because for the studio, I got to be able to tune it. I'm not down with the whackness. 
Um, okay, why am I, why do I have no sound? Huh? Okay. Look at that. Ladies and gentlemen, Telecaster. Sorry about that. I was wondering why that sounded so gainy. I had the pedal on. Eh. Let's start this over again. Well, we'll just leave that. Now it's with now it's normal. That also explains why at the end of the Strat thing, I was trying to do something kind of clean, and I was like, I thought I had some kind of weird ambient reverb on. I'm like, what's all that? Because the, the, the pedal was on, and it was kind of hitting the, the timeline a little bit. Anyway, there it is. Telecaster, road worn. What do you think? Oh! Yeah. 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 It's real full. Yeah. It's real nice. Fun to play, too. You know, more fun than the Strat. I don't yeah. know. The Strat's just... I'm just... I don't know, man. Not really my thing, but... Now for the oddball. Yeah, buddy! We're gonna really get geeked on this one. Alright, kids. This is a... Fender Squire, stock, tuned to Nashville Tuning.
That's cool. That's a trip. You throw that in the middle of a pop track, it's like, oh, was it plugged in? I was. So, again, going back to Hollywood, a lot of this influence happened there for me. The guy that worked in my studio, Greg, was into this Nash guitar stuff. It's basically the high six strings of a 12 string. And I bought a cheapy little Telecaster Strat, a, a Squire, you know, the, the 159 Squire. And uh, uh, we, he started using it. And, and I started using it. I was like, oh, this is cool. I'm like, oh, let's, get, let's make it better. I thought, let's make it better. Yeah. So I went and bought Seymour Duncan Texas Specials. Like the, you know, like the Billy Gibbons or those, you know, kind of like, you know, like real legit pickups. New electronics. Got it back. I didn't like it as much. <laughs> <laughs> because the crappy pickups just sounded so bright and it was perfect anyway. All right, we're going to, we're going to, we're going to add, we're going to do this. We're going to, hey, and if you order now, guess what you can get? If you order right now. Guess what else you can get? <laughs> as long as we're getting weird, let's get fully weird. Yeah. Here's my purple sparkle 12 string. I don't know if it's in tune though. Yeah, I've, I've been I've been messing with this a little bit lately. Well, you know, because this missed out on the last little thing of all the guitars. Oh, I forgot yeah. about it. It was sitting there too. This is a Dan Electro 12 string. One of my students hit me up. He's like, dude, do you want to sell that? I'm like, nah. He's like, I've been looking for that exact guitar. He said, they don't make it anymore. Anyway, there it is. Purple Sparkle. So if you have a guitar like this and you want to sell it, let me know because I got a, a student that wants it. Okay, we're just going to play this. It may be a little out of tune. This guitar makes me always play like Lucy in the Sky with Diamonds or something. Cool, huh? It's a trip, man. Like, cool yeah, this is a real sensitive guitar. Like, just uh, I mean, I my mind is a million miles away from this right now. I'm <laughs> I'm studying for oh, don't ask, but uh, you know, uh, kind of a secondary career with with fitness and health. So I've been like in trying to memorize the fibula and the tibula, the fibula and the tibula. 
I don't know which one. Is it the ulna radius? Or is it on the thumb side or the pinky side? I don't know. Does it matter? <laughs> if I want to pass the test, it matters. <laughs> All right, man. We're, we're, so that's it, man. It's on and cracking. Bo finally wakes up for the end of the video. Did Bo wake up? Yeah. Chunky. It's going to be happening, kids. Yeah. Like and subscribe. All right, let's shut this off. That This video is like nine hours long. But you know what? Oh, the other thing. I demonetized all my videos. No more commercials. And you know why I did it? Well, first of all, commercials make me crazy. But, you know, it's like the society and, and the, the machine pushing their agenda on people. And I'm just not down with it. And I don't need the money. So... No more monetizing videos. Lost all the millions of dollars. Of yeah, all the millions I was making on yeah. videos about guitar pickups. <laughs> <laughs> hey, look, there I am. Let's see. Do I get this off? Can I gonna get this off? 28 minutes. Oh, this, yeah, hey, this is a shorty. This is a shorty. What am I doing? Okay, I'm going to stop it. How am I stop? I can't even think of how to stop this thing.